and we will resume with members business in the name of Polly McNeill on the first anniversary of the Glasgow School of Art fire. Uh, I would encourage members who wish to contribute to press their request to speak buttons and I call on Polly McNeill. I lead this cross-party debate on the first anniversary of the Glasgow School of Art fire, but is, is the result of working closely with Adam Tomkins, Sandra White and Patrick Harvey to represent the people and businesses of Garnet Hill and Sucky Hall Street, whose lives have been devastated. It is important to say from the beginning that it is also the fire which destroyed the ABCO2 Academy, campus, the entire block, as well as the much-loved Mac. On the 15th of June 2018, Abda Mahmoud and her family went to celebrate Eid at their uncle's house on the south side of Glasgow. The family returned home around 11.30 that night, all dressed in their Eid best. As Abda explained to me, wearing her fancy heels, as they got closer to home, they saw the skyline across the motorway light up in a blaze. Soon they are told they cannot return home because for the second time in four years, Glasgow School of Art is on fire and the street has been cordoned off. All she had was one bank card on her. And like all other families, there was no time to collect important personal belongings, all the things they would need in their lives. Abda's artistic son, guardian documents, passport, and ID medication, all the things that she would need to look after her son. In the days after she would be refused money from a bank, an experience she says made her feel like a refugee in her own city. Families were split up due to difficulties in getting emergency accommodation, and they, like the 67 residents in total, were shut out of their homes for three months without one single visit to allow them to collect their personal belongings. This, in my opinion, was unacceptable. And the 33 businesses devastated, and some of those residents were running businesses from home, so you can see the devastation that it caused. 120 firefighters bought, bought the blaze and are to be commended for their incredible stamina and expertise in this fierce and enormous fire. It is an event for which the people affected by it know that their lives will change and continue this for a very long time. I'll never forget walking down Sucky Hall Street months after the fire with Councillor Frank McEviti, counting the number of closed businesses and meeting devastated owners who had lost so much, owners who still risk losing everything as they face continuing problems even today. If you ask any of the residents and businesses if they believe that there was an adequate response from authorities, they will tell you, in their words, they felt abandoned, as it took five weeks before anyone senior from Glasgow City Council even came to speak to them. Contingency plans were slow and information was not satisfactory. Lessons must be learned from this. A mere resident said, they do not provide the leadership that was needed to help us navigate this crisis. We as displaced residents had to reach out to the Scottish Government and ask them to step in and take control. The situation was so dire, we needed our belongings and all we got were threats of arrest for trying to breach the cordon. What he's referring to here is the demonstration of residents who call for one hour access to get their essentials. It's happened in other cities after disasters. Why did it not happen in Glasgow? But I do want to thank John Sherry who was appointed as a central point of contact for residents and businesses. His job was not an easy one. And I'd also like to thank Ruin Barlow, who took my calls from Building Control when I had some questions. We must learn the lessons as a city from this. But the disaster has also exposed the poor relationship of Glasgow School of Art with the local community. And it was staggering for me as an elected member to find out that most residents have never actually been invited into the school. But the commitment from Muriel Gray, who I wish well in her retirement, uh, she said that we should never let this happen again, and that needs to be honoured by the new chair and the new director. People don't feel safe now in their own homes, and they will not until there has been some accountability for the fire. New build plans of the School of Art must be shown to be robust in terms of materials and construction. But we all have many questions about what actually happened on that night, so we must see the fire report as soon as it's practically possible, because we need answers. I want to commend the sterling work of Joan McAlpine and the Culture Committee, who have helped enormously and now back their call for a public inquiry. Battles are still ongoing with insurance companies, some of who are trying to recover the support by the Scottish Government, that is, insurance companies trying to take back the money that Derek Mackay granted to help those businesses. And between us, the MSPs I've mentioned, are supporting these businesses. 
Uh, and I do have to acknowledge that the Cabinet Secretary for Finance, who set up the Fire Recovery Fund in response to our demands, has helped those businesses. But still today, they only have a 10% reduction in their non-domestic rates and they're struggling to survive. Walk to Walk, a well-known uh, eating place in Sudley Hall Street has gone. Campus is shut. Bagel Mania um, is struggling to stay and survive. And Newsbox, a news agent has been there for 20 years, told us very recently that he's battling um, to survive. My heart goes out to all of those who have been working on the 35 million restoration just before the fire. There are many like myself who are very proud of our heritage of Glasgow School of Art. That has to be said. As for the future, the public must be fully involved in decisions going forward and it must be done with the utmost sensitivity. The relationship between Glasgow School of Art and the local community must start afresh. The new frontage that they are planning and the ongoing work, it must be, they must be live to the trauma that people have experienced. The motion that we've signed calls on the Scottish Government and Glasgow City Council to work together to safeguard the area and secure a short and long-term future of Socky Hall Street, as there is deep concern that so much has happened that it might not fully recover. The ABCO2 Academy was a magnet for the area's entertainment, and it was utterly destroyed in the fire. I recently met with the owner, Michael Haddock, last month, and he confirmed his intention to rebuild in a modern, fit-for-purpose building. At this extremely important venue for Glasgow's music scene. Uh, he's just completed a detailed report on the structural damage, which is severe, and uh, importantly, has confirmed that the plans will, if at all possible, include an option to retain the facade. So we must get swift action from the City Council on the viability of the facade because the timescale for the rebuilding of the O2 ABC Academy is absolutely critical. If Sucky Hall Street is to have a strong, secure future, we must all work together over the next few years and we must make that part of the city thrive again. The CCA, the garage, the O2 eventually need their loading spaces to turn so that they can actually run their events and in time perhaps a street festival to bring people together. Perhaps that's a longer way off. I do want to thank all the local people who rose to the challenge of being leaders in their local community. Gillian, Adrian, Chris, Julie and so many others. I ask Scottish ministers not to abandon Sucky Hall Street, but to be an active player in the recovery of one of Scotland's most famous streets and to work with the UK government and the City Council and to give more help to those businesses who desperately need to put their lives back together. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I have uh, seven members who wish to contribute this afternoon. I uh, call Sandra White to be followed by Adam Tompkins. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I thank Polly McNeil for her excellent contribution? We did all work together uh, collectively for, for the good of the Gannett Hill area, uh, Sucky Hall Street, and the residents and businesses there also. Uh, I want to begin uh, my contribution by thanking the fire service, as Polly McNeil had already done, for their absolutely heroic actions, not only in 2018, but the 2014 fire also two fires, presiding officer, and I will hopefully get, come back to that. The fire at the Mark on the 15th of June 2018 was so fierce, it was described as looking into a furnace. And there is no doubt that without the skills and bravery of our firefighters, it could have been so much worse. The fact that water had to be pumped from the River Clyde down at the Broomalaw all the way up the hill to Garnet Hill shows you just the enormity of the task that faced our firefighters. And we really do owe them an enormous thank you on behalf of everyone for the work that they carried out. And presiding officer, as I said just previously there, two devastating fires, 2014, 2018. Unfortunate, negligent, bad management, criminal even. We can only speculate on that at the moment uh, as we await the fire report. But I will say this, and I thank John McAlpine and her committee also, uh, we must have a public inquiry into exactly what happened at the MAC and the two fires also. Now, whilst the focus uh, has been on the art school, we mustn't forget the local community, local businesses who have suffered and are still suffering from this devastating fire, having to relocate, it's already been mentioned by Polly McNeil, close down, I see their takings diminish. Uh, at this point, I do thank De Derek Mackay and the Scottish Government for initiating the scheme, which Polly McNeil had mentioned, giving money to local businesses to help them along. But unfortunately, the insurance companies have decided that uh, 
the £20,000, which was given to local businesses from the Scottish Government, it basically negates, and it's a reason they won't pay out, and that's been raised in the House of Commons by uh, MP Alison Thurlis also. Now, the local community, who were already facing uh, disruption due to the Avenues project, which I must admit is looking good now, it's moving on, but they were facing and are facing still disruption due to the Avenues project. Now they've got the aftermath of the art school fire, the O2, which really has devastated that area of Sucky Hall Street and Garnet Hill. People unable to access their properties, as I said before, their homes, even their pets, a cat was left there for a couple of days and someone broke through the barrier, or sleekly I will call the word, through the barrier to rescue their cat. Medicines, personals and work belongings, all of there. And, you know, whilst I think we all understand the reasons for that, for safety, the one issue which came up time and time again when I had meetings with uh, the local community was the lack of communication. Lack of communication and information, not only from officials, but from the art school also. And as Pauline McNeill has already said, lessons have to be learned from that. People were out their houses, couldn't access anything, very, very worried. But they would see people behind there having their lunch with a hard hat. Now, why couldn't even a residence, you know, someone from the residence community be allowed in to look at the place? So lessons really have to be learned from that. But indeed, the Muriel Gray, when asked at the committee if she had any regrets, said not working enough with the local community, and that's absolutely essential. It's absolutely true. Now, I note that uh, the Glasgow School of Art have a community liaison officer, Harriet Sims. She was appointed in November 2018, whose role is to help better connect with the, the local community, the Glasgow School of Art. Now, I've met with this group that's been set up, and uh, they have put forward a number of ideas. I've been working with students, local community, and also Kelvin College, uh, with various aspects of uh, skill projects, apprenticeships, that type of thing. So that's a step forward, and perhaps there are lessons that have to be learned. But the one lesson that's got to be learned and it's got to be sorted is Sucky Hall Street must be restored to its former glory. Sucky Hall Street to Glaswegians is a jewel in Glasgow's crown, and we must see it come back to that absolute jewel. Thank you very much, President Officer. Thank you, Ms. White. I call Adam Tompkins to be followed by James Kelly. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and I commend um, Pauline McNeill for bringing this um, motion to uh, debate today, and I thank her for her leadership in ensuring that MP MSPs from across the four political parties that represent Glasgow in this parliament have been able to work together in the public interest and in the city's interest uh, to hold decision makers to account for what has been a devastating period of time in uh, uh, Socky Hall Street and Garnet Hill. I also very strongly associate myself with the remarks at the beginning of Sandra White's speech about the debt that we all owe to the courage and to the bravery and to the commitment of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service in putting out this fire um, a year ago. The past 12 months, presiding officer, have been profoundly difficult for the businesses and residents of Socky Hall Street and Garnet Hill. They have been pushed to breaking point through no fault whatsoever of their own. And I, like Pauline McNeill and others, have been deeply struck by their resilience and tenacity over the course of the last year. But right from the beginning, it has to be said, presiding officer, that there was an alarming lack of any coherent or joined up plan from Glasgow City Council to deal with the consequences of the fire last year. Information was allowed to trickle down to traders and residents uh, in only the most piecemeal way in the days and weeks uh, that followed the fire. And it was clear that the council was constantly on the back foot. One year on, as far as I can see, there is still no long-term strategy for the recovery of Socky Hall Street. Now, no one blames the council for the fires, but at a time of crisis, it's clear, I'm afraid, that Susan Aitkins is an administration that runs for cover when the going gets tough, and that's just not good enough. Now, we await the findings of the SFRS investigation, which is, I have to say, taking an inordinately uh, long time. But in addition to that report, whenever it's published, presiding officer, there is, I believe, a compelling case for a full independent public inquiry, not only into the causes of the fire, but also into the future of the site, into the future of the Macintosh building. I called for that inquiry 
in February, and I was delighted when Joan McAlpine's uh, committee, and I commend the work that she has done uh, and that her committee colleagues have done on the Culture, Tourism, Europe and External Affairs Committee of this Parliament, I was delighted when that committee echoed my call for a public inquiry in its report, which was published uh, in March. And I am concerned, like many of us are, presiding officer, and this needs to be said, I'm concerned by the Glasgow School of Arts continuing apparent lack of civic duty to the area that it serves. As businesses and residents were prevented from returning to their premises and homes in the immediate aftermath of the fire, as Pauline McNeill has uh, vividly uh, told us, the GSA's focus was on providing public assurances that the MAC would be rebuilt and that it would all be okay and that they would be in charge just five days after the blaze. This is blatant disregard for the GSA's neighbours, and it understandably does not sit comfortably with the local community. Let me just tell you about the first time I went to see the GSA last summer in the aftermath of the fire. Within five minutes of that meeting, I was told two things. Firstly, that the fire had nothing to do with them because they did not have stewardship of the building at the time. It was under the stewardship of Keir Construction. And secondly, that they and they alone would determine how, where, and when the building was to be rebuilt. That isn't leadership, it isn't stewardship, it isn't custodianship, it is arrogance, and it has no place uh, in the future of uh, decision-making about uh, the School of Art and uh, Garnet Hill. Um, but we need a full public inquiry, not only to think about the future of this building, but also to establish the full facts uh, underscoring what happened uh, a, a year ago. Uh, the fire brigade, the fire engines that were sent out from Calcadden Station, which is seconds away, from Garnet Hill, it's literally just around the corner. And the fire brigade were, 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 were there within minutes of the alarm being called. But when the fire brigade arrived at the site of the fire, they reported that that building had been ablaze for at least 45 minutes and perhaps for as long as an hour. How on earth, in the middle of Glasgow city centre, could our national treasure, the Macintosh building of the Glasgow School of Art, be allowed to burn for an hour before an alarm is even sounded. These are the questions which Joan McAlpine's committee rightly identified as needing answered. And the reason why we need a full independent public inquiry is not to ask those questions, but to answer them. Presiding officer, under the School of Arts stewardship, the Macintosh building has been allowed to burn down twice in the space of four devastating years. They have failed, presiding officer, in their custodianship of what is a national treasure. Now I want an inquiry into the future of the building, but my personal preference would be for it to be rebuilt as a public asset for us all to enjoy and as a magnet to draw tourists from all over the world to Glasgow to celebrate the heritage of Charles Rennie Mackintosh and that it should not be rebuilt as a private art school. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tompkins. I call James Kelly to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Can I congratulate Pauline McNeill on securing this important debate? And I uh, can also compliment Pauline McNeill, Adam Tompkins, Patrick Harvey and Sandra uh, White for the work that they have clearly done in working very closely uh, with the communities around the, the Glasgow School of Art and providing some much needed support. Um, on the 15th of June last year, I was actually at a night out in Glasgow and uh, I was driving home. I dropped a friend in Sucky Hall Street and I, around about half past 11, uh, 12 o'clock at night, and I could, you could sense that there was a bit of a commotion beginning to build, and you could start to hear fire engines. Uh, and I made my way back home, and you know, was shocked to then see the, the 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 photographic images on social media of the school of art, you know, uh, ablaze, uh, and the you know the then um, chaos that then unfolded, you know, for people in that, that local community. I think there are kind of three key things that have got to be uh, drawn from this debate. Um, you know, first of all, we need to learn the lessons from this fire. You know, I, I just Adam Tompkins saying that uh, it took 45 minutes for the alarm to be raised. I didn't actually know that until he, he spoke about it there just now. So when I was when I was down on Sucky Hill Street that night, the fire had pro probably been ablaze for about an hour, and the fire engines were were only then reaching, you know, that's a, a real area of concern. Um, there's been some discussion about, you know, uh, potential negligence from the contractors that were reconstructing the building, and that might have contributed 
to the, the fire. I think the other thing that needs to be considered is the other fires in the, in the Sucky Hall Street area in recent years, the previous fire in 2014, and also the fire at the pavilion. And it has to be said, there's been a number of fires throughout the Glasgow area, you know, for example, at the old Scottish Power site in Cathcart, which was vacated and there was a fire there, and there's been a number of other fires. So I think we need to examine, you know, why we're suddenly seeing a higher frequency of these fires. Uh, I think the second point that needs to be looked at is how we support uh, the community going forward and the businesses going forward. I mean, that whole area um, running from Charing Cross End of Sucky Hall Street down to Buchanan Galleries has been really had a devastating time in recent years. Um, the, 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 from the first fire to the pavilion fires, a lot of business has been closed uh, down and then tried to, to reopen. And that, you know, is a real kind of hub in, in Glasgow city centre. Uh, and we should be seeking to rebuild that. And the comments that some of the previous speakers have made about the, the slow response and the ad adequate response in terms of supporting businesses and also people who have been displaced uh, from their housing uh, is, is absolutely correct. Um, I think uh, the, the, the other point is, the third point I would make in all of this is that, you know, we need, the, the whole pace of this operation needs to, to, uh, needs to move quicker. Uh, the fact that we're a year down the line and we still don't know exactly what the, the, the what the reasons were for, were for the fire uh, is not good enough. Uh, I would support the, the calls for uh, a public inquiry and it's quite clear that you know more needs to be done by the city council and other authorities to support uh, businesses uh, and local people. Uh, so clearly this debate has shown a light on some fundamental issues in terms of why the fire occurred, what the role of the School of Art is in terms of interfacing with the local community and trying to, to rebuild that legacy and how we support businesses and the community. And I hope some of the points that have been made here uh, are taken forward and considered seriously and very quickly. Thank you, Mr Kelly. I call Patrick Harvey to be followed by Joe McAlpine. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Oh, no, not again. God, not again. That's about the only thing I could keep saying to myself when I first saw the, the images of that fire. The tragic loss that was felt, I think, by everybody who saw those, those images, having remembered the fire from a few years ago, not again. Whatever criticisms have been made, and I'll come back to those, of the art school, of poor communication afterwards, every one of us must know that everybody who had an involvement with that building or with that wider community must have felt their heart ripped out of their chest when those first images were, were shown, or as Pauline McNeil said in her opening statements, when they were traveling home, tr trying to travel home to the local community. I think we need to, first of all, First of all, remember what an utter tragedy this has been, not just for those individuals, but for our whole city. So I really want to, to strenuously thank, uh, as others have, Polly McNeil for working to ensure that there is cross-party dialogue on this and for bringing the debate here today. And there have been other points made that I, I want to echo as well. The thanks to those in the emergency services who responded so quickly, our empathy for those who've been directly affected. Our thanks also to the Culture Committee here in Parliament for the work that they have done as well. The, the word iconic is very often overused. Everything is described as iconic. Uh, it becomes almost a disposable throwaway word. But the, the Mac building absolutely was iconic. It was iconic of Glasgow's architectural heritage, of our cultural and creative heritage, and of generations of young people studying in Glasgow as well, their hopes for the future and the contribution they made generation after generation uh, to the cultural life of our city, of our country, and of the world. And Sockey Old Street as well is iconic of Glasgow's cultural vibrancy, both high and low culture uh, thrown together uh, in, a, in a creative way. And Sockey Hall Street is iconic globally of Glasgow as well. 
more than just a building was lost. Polly McNeil also reminded us of the other buildings, including the O2 and other businesses directly affected, uh, destroyed or still currently closed as a result of the fire. But I think we lost more than just those buildings and those businesses. I think there has been a loss of trust in institutions, both through poor communication and, and poor dialogue uh, at a government level, local and, and perhaps central as well, and trust in the institution of the art school itself has been severely damaged. I hope not irreparably. I hope it can be rebuilt, but we need to acknowledge, and I think the art school management as well need to acknowledge that that won't happen overnight, and trust is sometimes harder to build, to, to rebuild than a physical structure. Adam Tompkins expressed his disappointment and anger as well, that a year on from this fire, there is still no credible long-term plan, not just for the, the art school and the buildings directly affected, but for the revival of that wider community. Such an important, such a vital part of Glasgow's commercial, cultural, uh, social, uh, and nighttime economy as well, our, the life of our city. This is a, an important part of the life of our city. It needs that long-term plan and it needs every level of government, UK, Scottish and local government, to play their role. It needs the art school as an institution to play a role, but it needs them not to dominate. It needs to be led, the development and implementation of that plan, by the whole community that's been affected. The residents who have been treated poorly, throughout that year, the businesses that have survived and those who might return uh, over the course of that year, they need to be in the driving seat of developing that long-term plan for the revival of the wider area, not just of one building or one institution. So I call on every level of government, yes, to commit to the public inquiry because we need far more than just the fire report but to the development of a plan which is led by the community, because that's the only way that we're going to see the rebuilding of trust that was lost, which is harder to put in place again than bricks and mortar. Thank you. And I call John McAlpine to be followed by Annie Wills. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to congratulate Pauline McNeill for securing uh, this debate. My remarks will be informed, of course, by the Culture, Tourism and Europe and External Affairs Committee's inquiry, uh, the loss of a national treasure. And I'd like to thank um, the MSPs uh, from outside the committee who engaged uh, with our inquiry, Polly McNeill, Sandra White and Adam Tompkins, as well as the uh, committee members and uh, clerks and indeed all the witnesses uh, who gave evidence to the committee. Uh, the committee was driven uh, by the fact that, like everybody else, we were shocked that uh, one of our, our greatest cultural treasures was destroyed um, so shortly after uh, the first fire in 2014. Uh, I think it was Lachlan Gowdy, the artist, who said that the Glasgow School of Art Macintosh building is the greatest piece of art that's ever been produced in Scotland. And I think that there's a very, very strong case for saying that. Of course, it was in our custodianship, or more directly, it was in the custodianship of an institution which is largely publicly funded. So it was absolutely appropriate that the committee uh, looked into the events leading up to the second fire. Uh, and I think probably we were driven by um, people saying that perhaps the shock of the first fire and the um, understandable sympathy um, uh, right across uh, the world uh, perhaps meant that maybe not enough questions were asked about the origins of uh, that fire because of course if that fire hadn't happened the 2018 wouldn't have, fire wouldn't have happened during uh, the restoration. We are the Culture Committee and so the focus of our inquiry was on the loss of a cultural treasure but it soon very became, became apparent that the, there was a, a very, very considerable concern 
uh, about the impact on the residents, and that was uh, made clear by the residents themselves in their su written submissions to the committee and the engagement of Glasgow MSPs. Um, it was very clear from the written evidence that there was a lack of engagement with respect for or duty of care towards the residents from GSA. Um, and I just wanted to read a, a little bit of the written evidence. Uh, they talked about how uh, they, they felt conflicted about the Glasgow School of Art. Uh, they, they love the building, its history and its origins, but it also represents a distant, selfish, inward-looking and thoughtless neighbour. The committee was very struck by the written evidence uh, of the residents and uh, one of our recommendations was that uh, more needed to be done uh, to rebuild trust with the community and that has to be done in a formal way. There has to be formal methods of engagement uh, drawing, drawn up uh, between the management of the art school uh, and the community. And I think at that point it's, it's important to say that whatever decision is made um, with regards to the rebuilding uh, of the art school or not, um, it should not be done uh, by the Glasgow School of Art. It should not be in their custodianship. Two former directors of the Glasgow School of Art told our committee that they didn't think that the GSA had the capacity uh, to take on a project of that nature. We don't have time to go into the details of uh, the report um, and I hope that at a later date um, I'll be able to debate it more fully um, in, in, in the Parliament. Uh, but we do stand by our, uh, our key uh, findings uh, that we, we noted that having clearly identified the risks posed by fire via a number of reports directly commissioned by the GSA board in the period up to 2014, the Glasgow Speak School of Art appeared not to have addressed specifically the heightened risk of fire to the Macintosh building. We noted that the board considered that the fire safety measures that were taken went above and beyond the standards required, but we were unable to find any evidence of that beyond the decision to install a water mist system in 2008. And of course, we know that despite that decision having been taken, the water mist system was not installed before 2014 and it still wasn't installed before the 2018 fire and during that whole period of time uh, knowing the risks to the building uh, the, there were major conservation projects major cap x projects embarked upon by the glasgow school of art and of course they did not involve in our view adequate fire protection um, I note that there are, the, the, there are further um, recommendations that the committee made in terms of preserving uh, historic buildings which are particularly at risk uh, and the government's responsibility there and the government have actually made a very helpful uh, response uh, to our committee report um, with regards to the regulation and some commitments which uh, I found very constructive and I hope to be debate at a later date. However, uh, in conclusion, I want to just return to the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service's response to our report, uh, where they were very clear uh, that their own report, when it comes, uh, will only look at the causes of the fire and its spread, and it will not look at the, uh, the, 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 the events leading up to it, the management of the building. It will not look at, in the context uh, of the fire. And that's why our, our, our main finding that there has to be a public inquiry into the fire has to stand, uh, because it's only through a public inquiry that we can really get to the bottom of events that led to these devastating fires, but also uh, the effect on the local community and the future of the art school. Thank you very much. Thank you. I call on Annie Wells to be followed by Claire Baker. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I too would like to associate myself with the remarks from across the Chamber regarding the immense bravery shown by the emergency services on that, on that night, and also to thank uh, Jo McAlpine and her committee for the, the work that they did regarding the, the Glasgow School of Art. I am extremely grateful for the opportunity to speak in today's debate and want to thank Pauline McNeill for shining a light on an issue that is still affecting Glasgow one year later. It's with great concern that businesses and residents of Garnet Hill, Suckey Hall Street and the surrounding areas are still experiencing the effects of the fire. And I hope it's with that that this debate can refocus our attentions 
on getting this issue sorted for the long term. One year ago, on June the 15th, the Glasgow School of Art uh, Macintosh building very sadly caught fire. This was the second fire to hit the building in just four years, as we've heard, and resulting in very extensive and long-lasting damage. Designed by one of Glasgow's biggest icons, this is a really special building and one that everyone in Glasgow loves and is proud of. It is with great concern that residents and businesses are still experiencing problems associated with the fire. Local residents expressed their frustration over feeling like they were dumped back in their homes after three months and expected just to get on with it. Earlier this year, residents stated that they felt being shut out when it came to making longer term plans for the regenerating the area. And on, on top of this, as Paul McNeill pointed out, we've seen issues with vehicle access, refuse collection and insurance claims. Problems you would not expect to see one year on. Local businesses too have been severely affected by the cordon put in place after the fire. Some have relocated and some have reported losses of up to 75% on the previous year. The importance of Sucky Hall Street to the city's local economy, economy is paramount and I'm concerned that without bold action, an iconic street is being left to decay. Only last week we saw retailer Lush announce the closure of its branch in the street, one of many closures in the last couple of years. This week we have seen the fire inquiry move into its final stages and as we've just heard, the, with the main focus being on the likely origin and cause. As my colleague Adam Tompkins has stated, first and foremost, we need to see a full public inquiry into the events that took place. There have been serious concerns raised over key documents being hidden from public view and questions about the management and oversight of the restoration by the Glasgow School of Art. It's with that that we can also begin to learn vital lessons with wider significance for historic buildings across the world. As we saw with the Notre Dame fire in April, building ca buildings can be so much more than the materials that they are made from. They can embody the essence of a city and the pride of the people that live there. And that leads me on to my second point, that this should be, should, that this should be having wider discussions about what's best for Glasgow in the long term when it comes to the Macintosh building. I know that the Glasgow School of Art has recently reaffirmed its intention to restore the Macintosh building, but as Adam Tompkins again pointed out, there may be potential to move the building to a different area of the city to make full use of the economic and tourist opportunities. Presiding officer, I'd like to finish today by giving my sympathies to those that are still being affected by the Glasgow School of Art fire one year later. Glaswegians are proud people and we're proud of our city and its heritage. It's so important that we make sure that local residents do not lose out because of reasons outside their control and that we restore this iconic building to its former glory. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Wells. I'd like to accommodate one more member who wishes to contribute as well as the Minister. And so I'd be minded to accept a motion without notice under Rule 8.14.3 to extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. Could I invite Paul McNeill to move such a motion? I move. Thank you very much. The question is that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. Are we agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Thank you. Can I call Claire Baker to be followed by the Minister? Um, thank you, President Officer. I welcome this motion. I'd like to begin by offering praise to my colleague Pauline McNeill for her powerful and detailed speech, highlighting the serious issues faced by her constituents as a result of the devastating fire at the Glasgow Art School, and recognise that Ms McNeill also gave credit to the cross-party efforts in raising these concerns. The trauma for local residents who were unable to return to their homes for an extended period shows the individual consequences of such significant events and it's important we address the difficulties they have experienced. The particular location of the School of Art means that a year on challenges continue for local residents in terms of vehicle access and services such as bin collections. Local businesses too have felt significant consequences with some relocating and others unable to reopen both options with notable financial impacts. I agree with Polly McNeill that local, Scottish and UK governments need to make a joint effort to ensure recovery of the Sockey Hall Street area and continue to support those who are affected. 
I am also pleased to read reports that the art school has begun working more with the Garnet Hill community to improve relations and I hope this continues as it was made clear that there has been a failing in communication. Um, it is important that relation to it is that, that relationship is particularly important in relation to any proposals for the restoration of the Macintosh building and the carrying out of such work. As a member of the Culture, Tourism and Europe and External Affairs Committee, I welcomed our inquiry. While the timing ahead of the report from the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service investigation meant that in some areas of our work was limited by not knowing the cause of the more recent fire, the ability of the committee to respond to issues of public interest like the art school fire in order to provide a forum for exploring matters and providing scrutiny is definitely welcome. With over 47,000 listed buildings in Scotland and over 3,500 Category A listed buildings, we are a country with great built heritage with historic properties a key contributor to our reputation as a desirable tourist destination. However, the listing system used by Historic Environment Scotland covering this vast number of properties currently lacks a formal means of recognising the smaller subcategory A properties with particular cultural and historical national importance such as the Macintosh building and as such offers no ability to provide them with enhanced protection. Work to identify the critical buildings within those who are all A-listed in Scotland could take place with a view to compel owners to take additional steps such as providing enhanced fire safety measures with related public funding which would then have the flexibility to allow this. This was a committee recommendation calling for the Scottish Government, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and Historic Scotland to review Category A listed buildings to assess whether there should be interventions required to reduce fire risk and provide other specific protection. Relatedly, the remit of Historic Environment Scotland is to provide a leadership role in the conservation and preservation of historic buildings, but this does not currently provide it with a clear role in terms of ensuring adequate fire prevention for such buildings, as the Glasgow Art School. The committee has called for a review of HESI's remit and the possible extension of its powers in areas such as measures to safeguard against fire in those buildings that are recognised to have national and cultural importance. While the Glasgow Art School has repeatedly stated its intention to rebuild the Macintosh building, there is also some debate about whether current arrangements on management of the site are the most suitable. Given the other responsibilities of the Glasgow Art School Board, are they able to give sufficient priority to the safeguarding of the site? Would more specific expertise at board level or through alternative arrangements such as placing it into a trust better reflect the importance of the building? In a similar vein to fire protection, this is not just a question for the Glasgow Art School, but for all custodians of historic buildings of national and cultural importance, we need to ensure that adequate protection is provided to these buildings. Once the investigation is concluded and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Report is published, the committee has recommended that the Scottish Government establish a public inquiry with judicial powers into the 2014 and 18 fires. I believe there is merit in this proposal for the reasons that have been outlined by others this afternoon, but also it would provide an avenue to consider fire risk at historic buildings nationally and the ability of custodians to manage these properties. Thank you. Thank you very much. And can I call on the Minister Kate Forbes to conclude our debate? Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank members, and particularly Polly McNeill, for bringing this motion, which was a very open collaborative motion reflecting on the cross-party work that's taken place over the last years. And I found uh, this speech is quite moving in places as well as being very practical in what the challenges were facing residents, businesses, as well as the actions that are required as we look forward to the future. And it's of course poignant and fitting that this debate takes place within a week of that first year anniversary of the fire and um, an opportunity to reflect. Incidentally, as an aside, my sister was a resident on Socky Hall Street when the fire spread just um, about a minute uh, away from uh, the art school and that sense of fear and worry and panic, which I know um, she felt and certainly her wider family felt is just a tiny little iota of what it must have been like for the, the many people who saw the spread of the fire and then had to face the consequences of that fire for months and even a year on. Now, I'm responding to this debate because of the wider economic implications 
of the fire, which I think shows the breadth of the issues. And my colleague, the Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism and External Affairs, has already responded formally uh, in short to the Culture Committee's recent report and recommendations, which was welcomed by the Scottish Government. And just briefly on the recommendation uh, about a public inquiry, the Cabinet Secretary has said that she will await the outcome of the SFRS's investigation before responding in greater depth to all the, the Culture Committee's recommendations, including the one on an inquiry. Yeah. I appreciate the Minister giving way. Um, and I'm also pleased that she recognised that the wider implications of the Sucky Hall Street Garnet Hill area uh, as a primary concern for everyone. Uh, will the Minister be addressing uh, what the role of the Scottish Government could be? I just wanted to make sure that you were going to cover it. Thank you. Minister. Yes, I will absolutely um, come on to that, if that's OK. Um, now, just briefly, I do know that there are no adequate words to capture that sense of disbelief, which I think Patrick Harvey um, outlined very well, and that devastation wrought by the fire. And both to the, the physical fabric of the historic building, but also to its significance as a cultural and an educational institute. But it did cause acute difficulties for residents and businesses in the area. And while some issues were, were quickly identified, there are clearly things which were not identified and responded to um, as quickly as they could have been. Now, that's partly due to the inescapable consequences of a large fire and the efforts of the emergency services in the aftermath. But some were also due to the uniqueness of the site. And it was in, face, in the face of that unprecedented situation that the Scottish Government agreed to become involved. And I can personally vouch for the personal support and interest of the Cabinet Secretary for Finance, having seen some of the, the efforts and the interventions that he took over the last year. And recognising that enormous challenge, which is still at hand, we will absolutely not abandon Socky Hall Street. We remain committed to our active involvement, working collaboratively, as we've already done with, with Glasgow City Council and others. And just reflecting on some of those actions to date, we need to build on those. So already Glasgow City Council and Scot the Scottish Government created the Joint Emergency Fund for the households who were suddenly uprooted and displaced by the fire. And 123,000 was paid through that fund to support 32 separate affected households. And for businesses in June 2018, as the Chamber will know, the Cabinet Secretary announced that the £5 million recovery fund with more than 200 businesses having received over £3 million in grant support from that fund. And in December 2018, the Cabinet Secretary announced that the remaining balance of £1.85 million would be made available to Glasgow City Council to support business recovery. And that allowed the Council to ensure that eligible businesses were not liable for business rates until the end of the last financial years. But those actions and that support, I know, does not diminish the enormous challenges that are still faced by residents and businesses. Hopefully, at the time, it provided them with a little bit of breathing space during a very difficult time. But a lot of speakers have identified, for example, problems with insurance. And although my officials were in contact with the Association of British Insurers in the immediate aftermath of the fire, and that dialogue continues and remains open, I'd be happy to um, offer Polly McNeill and others the opportunity to connect them with the ABI directly, if they haven't already spoken to them directly, to identify some of those challenges with um, the uh, insurance. Sandra White identified that the priority, the bigger priority of ensuring that Socky Hall Street recovers. It must be restored as the significant retail, trading and cultural location that it has been known for for so long. And that is, of course, the primary responsibility of Glasgow City Council as the local authority. But the Scottish Government will work with the Council in any respect that we can. The Socky Hall and Garnet uh, Hill Regeneration Framework's 10-year plan, which includes the avenues which have been identified, as well as a range of other local improvements, will continue. But the effects of the fire will um, continue to be felt for some time. And that memory of, of fear or, or of worry cannot be quickly erased. And so, Presiding Officer, I don't say this lightly, but what I hope for the future is exactly what Adam Tompkins identified that if there is a, a way to restore Socky Hall Street to be even 
better than it was before to restore the Mac building to be even better and more accessible than it was before and to ensure that we restore that sense of community so that there are no awkward neighbours as was identified in the, the Culture Committee's report. But actually, we do not ever go through that sense of, of disbelief and devastation ever again. We ensure that there are lessons learned. We ensure that there is that collaboration. And I think the political leadership that's been uh, shown across the different parties in the last year is something that can hopefully take us forward into the future. Thank you very much, Minister. I would thank all the members and Parliament Hill for their contributions. That uh, concludes our debate, and I suspend the meeting until 2 p.m.